Perspective, presented by the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association, following a few principles of humanism. We're committed to the use of science and reason for understanding the universe and for solving human problems. We're skeptical of untested claims of knowledge, but we're open to new ideas. We are concerned with securing justice and fairness in society and in ending intolerance and discrimination. We are committed to the total separation of religion and government. We affirm humanism as a realist alternative to the theologies of despair and the ideologies of violence. We reject the concept of an afterlife and believe in living a full and rewarding life here and now. We value and respect each individual's right to judge and lead their lives according to their own position as long as it's respectful of other people living in a free society. We hope you enjoy today's program and others in the weeks to follow. Hello, folks. I'm Harry Greenberger. Thank you for being with us, and uh, we're sure you're going to enjoy our program. Uh, we uh, have, did a previous show about Prospect New Orleans, uh, which is a biennial uh, event here of, of great international interest. And today I want to talk about one of the uh, exhibitions that's a, a part of this biennial. And I have as my guest Tamika Norris, who is the artist, and Keen Copper, who owns the May Gallery, where Tamika is exhibiting. I want to thank both of you for being here and uh, congratulate you. you for being selected. Thank you. Uh, because this is a, an elite group of artists. And you and they bring these artists from around the world and New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, you qualify for either one of those categories, <laughs> right? I would say so. Yes, it does. All right. Well, uh, what we want to do today is talk about your exhibition and what you do and um, and uh, what people will uh, will find when they come to the May Gallery. So the show is yours. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, well, yes, I guess I'll start by saying um, it's so funny. Uh, people have asked me, well, you know, how did you get invited? And my story sort of goes, actually, I wasn't invited. I sort of, uh, I had an opportunity. I I've known Franklin Sermons, who's a curator, for a number of years. And when I was still in grad school at Yale, um, I found out that he was the curator. And I was quite excited for him. Uh, and I was trying to decide what to do after grad school, to go to New York, which is sort of the ideal. Um, or go back to Los Angeles where I had been living, or go home, and home in quotes, which is the Gulf Coast region, which I've not lived, or had not lived for about 15 years. Um, I see, but your choice between New York, Los Angeles, and New Orleans were th mm -hmm. three art-related art uh, lo lo localities. Yeah. And so you, uh, uh, you, may, you, you probably passed up some major uh, Lo lo locations to come home. Yeah. Which, which was not a bad decision because New Orleans is an art center as well. Absolutely. Okay. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe not the most logical, right, coming out program um, uh, like, like Yale, but first of all, I was thinking of like my grandparents and my family who I've not seen in so long and just wanting to reconnect to home and sort of deal with um, a lot of the trauma and pain that I had actually not dealt with uh, related to Katrina. Um, we, all, we all had pain related to Katrina. To absolutely. How did it affect you? Well, I wasn't, I wasn't here when it happened. I was actually in Los Angeles um, about to enter UCLA, and it was, it was really difficult, A, because I had no contact to my family for about five days, um, which was in and of itself devastating. Yes. And um, actually, that was where I made my first, 2000, August 2005 was the first time I ever sat down and made a painting with intention, or made a work of art with intention. Prior to that, uh, I was kind of just in classes making stuff. And um, I gessoed over an ex-boyfriend's paint and sat in front of the TV where I was watching my home be destroyed. And mm -hmm. I just started to uh, paint and recall uh, sites that I knew were no longer there. 
Um, so that was how that, that was part of my, I think my practice and your, was and your medium is generally what uh, oil, oil on canvas, or what? <laughs> well, my medium—that's uh, also nothing straightforward over here with me. Uh, um, my medium is painting, performance, video, my body, my music, the words that come out of my mouth, my engagement with the community, my engagement with other people. All of that is uh, a part of my art practice. Tamika, you are overwhelming me. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, with all of that available to talk about, yes. go ahead. <laughs> um, so, so all that to say, I was not invited. I, I called Franklin first to congratulate him on being selected as the chief curator for Prospect and told him, look, I come home if you provide me an opportunity to make my most ambitious work yet. And so I think that was around late, no, that was mid-2012 when I was finishing grad school. So we had stayed in dialogue from 2012, I'm buying my ticket, I'm going home, you know, or is this still on? And he's like, keep me posted. And we kept talking about me wanting to make a project talking about coming home. What does it mean to come home? I okay. left as what I would consider, you know, lower socioeconomic, you know, uneducated uh, young woman of color and returned, you know, an Ivy League academic, you know, art, you know, burgeoning art, artist. Um, and that's a lot to sort of negotiate, not just for myself, but even the people around me trying to adjust to the person, the woman, and the artist that I have become. All right. Now, I want, I want to give uh, Keen uh, an opportunity here. You're, you're, you have the May Gallery. Yep. Tanika is exhibiting at your gallery. Right. Where is that? Um, well, first, uh, the gallery is, I'm, I'm the founder of the gallery, but it's actually a nonprofit, so we have a board of 11 people who govern uh, the organization. Okay. And um, it's a residency, and so we invite artists from around the world uh, to come and stay in New Orleans, but in this case, Tamika uh, lives here, and um, they stay here for three months or so usually and produce a body of work which is uh, to be exhibited for three months at the gallery. And, and um, where is that located? The, the gallery's in the Upper Ninth Ward, so it's actually just a couple blocks away from where Tamika lives. Um, okay. That's 2839 North Robertson Street. And um, uh, yeah, so we've been open for about two and a half years, and this is we're going into our third season, and we're really grateful to be uh, an official venue for Prospect Three. Well, I, so, I think having uh, Tamika is probably a feather in your cap. How yeah. did you do that? Um, well, actually, uh, I think we met maybe a year ago, year and a half ago or so. It I, was well, during I, your show. It was right after your sh you had some work up on Saint Claude. And, and then I contacted you after that, and we yeah. had lunch and, and met and kind of spoke about your work. It was actually, I'm sorry to cut you off, it was actually quite funny. It was a very New Orleans yeah. thing that happened. Keen had emailed me. Oh yeah, that's right. And yeah. Yeah. was like, you know, oh, you know, I've looked at your work, you know, where do you live? Are you local? Do you live somewhere else? Will you be visiting New Orleans? And I think I emailed back and said, you know, I'm, I'm in New Orleans. And then, then it kind of fell up that we didn't email each other. We didn't follow up. Then I went to a, randomly to a crawfish boil. Yeah. And, then I, and then I run into uh, this, at this guy House, yeah. Yeah, at, uh, at, at Bob Sneed, who uh, is a part of Press Street Antenna Gallery. Uh, which I believe is also a part of Prospect in I, some I way, think it's, shape it's a or form, satellite, satellite a, sat, a, a P3 plus yeah. uh, site. Yeah. So I uh, went to a crawfish boil, started talking to this guy, <laughs> and then we find out that he had been emailing me and mm -hmm. I was the person. So, so it was quite, quite a very New Orleans home style Yes, well on email meeting. you don't know what someone looks, looks like. Looks like, exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. All right, well Tamika, you've got a lot of material on the table here. You want to talk <laughs> about some of that? Sure. Well, we've got, well, I see on the floor, you guys can see um, oh, yeah. these uh, bean bags on the floor. Well, so we can call them, they are bean bags. I'm also calling them soft sculptures. They're also paintings. Uh, so there are a lot of things, but, but in the exhibit, they play uh, the role of a seat, seating for, um, for the film installation. Uh -huh. So um, pay, uh, an audience is invited to come into the gallery to view a feature-length film where there are these sculptures that I have made. I see. Um, now, are these two of, of many or just two, the two? Two of nine. 
Um, oh, and I some see. of them are much larger than what you're seeing here. This was just what I could put in my car. Oh, um, I see. And the iography on them um, speak to sites that are less and less common in this region that speaks to the sort of uh, nostalgia of home for me. So like Piggly Wiggly and like Jitney Jungle and um, different different icons that are yeah, just well becoming... that was all before your time. That was not before my time. How do I know <laughs> about Wiggly? it? Piggly Wiggly? Piggly, of course. <laughs> so, right. so um, and also, I, I would like to say another, another very important aspect um, of this body of work that I made for Prospect has so much more to do with me. Um, I had to hire a lot of hands to help me construct a lot of these things. Okay. Um, so a lot of my students, I, I am a professor at Dillard <coughs> University and also a lecturer at Xavier University. So I've been able to have a lot of young people in my studio and I have a shotgun, which is my house and my studio. So it, it's been many, many, many months, nearly a year of having a lot of young people in and out of my home helping me sew and put together and storytelling and eating lunch and talking. Um, so that's the seating. Then okay. What else you have? If you guys, you have some <laughs> something there some you want to hold up. Uh, These are some uh, very small um, paintings. Uh, they're all twelve by twelve. It's this is an excerpt of a larger body of of works. Well, if you hold it up, uh, we can we can zoom in on it and get a uh, get a so, big, bigger picture there. So these two, for example. Some of them are very simple gestures. This is just a bed sheet. A lot of the materials, like I don't work with canvas. I always work with found materials or materials. Um, I, I love to, to take sheets uh, that are given to me from my family, things that have been, that have been lived on, that have uh -huh. a life, that have an aura, if you will. Oh, I see. And, um, and this is a hair bow, a hair accessory thing. Um, and it just becomes a minimal gesture across across a surface, um, and this speaks to sort of childhood, girlhood, a uh, different time in my life. All right. Um, and now, then, what is the other one? And there? then this one here, actually, these two. Um, my mother presented me uh, with a box of stuff that basic, basically she was like, you need to get this stuff out of my house. It's been here, like, look, look, at, the, look at this box of stuff. And it was a, an alphabet book that I made maybe when I was four. And um, I was actually quite intrigued with my ability to do collage at three or four years old. And it became a sort of a jump off point for me to think about making compositions. I actually think that this composition for the letter R in my alphabet book, which is ravioli, rope, and rose, is quite an exquisite um, composition. Uh, so it's almost like looking at another artist's work and taking notes and figuring out where to go. So, um, and I've been, and, and obviously as an artist, as we grow and change, we try to figure out what is our language, what is it that we're trying to talk about and bring forward. And it's just been really profound that my mother kept all these things because it's been an opportunity for me to study and look at another uh, another point of my artistic practice that I know at no point my mother was not thinking, she's a brilliant artist. <laughs> Nobody was thinking that. Um, so, so, so these works are, are me re-entering uh, language uh, and gestures from a, from a very early point in my life. Okay, now you got a couple of others over there. And here's actually, if you can grab that one if you don't yeah. mind, Keen. This one is, um, so I was thinking a lot about printmaking. So considering I, I went to Yale, which still baffles me that I really don't, I, I didn't even learn about contemporary art until I was about 22 years old, um, which is really late in life, I believe. And I, the first exhibit I saw was in Los Angeles, was at the, um, Mocha, I believe, and it was Robert Rauschenberg's work. And the uh -huh. second, the second exhibition that I ever saw was Jean-Michel Basquiat, which I believe was also it was either at LACMA or at or at Mocha in Los Angeles. And um, I was quite I didn't know what I was looking at. I did not know why I was moved by it, but I was. And so I was thinking a lot about uh, printmaking. And coming from a school like Yale, for example, printmaking means something. It's, yes. it's a very sophisticated process, but in my case, uh, printmaking just meant put some paint on my face and smash my face against the surface. And that becomes my own mode of printmaking. 
and basically my practice is just, um, it just revolves around using the skills that I have to make the gestures and the language and the messages that I want to convey. Uh, okay. You want to do pick up that one last one and then we will uh, And continue. the last one here is also uh, from the same collage, uh, uh, the alphabet book that my mother presented me with that I'd made. And thinking about meaning, in some of the letters, it was very difficult to distinguish, well, what is it? So P, and it's this here. And I was thinking, well, maybe that's picture. And I thought, well, no, maybe it's portrait. And what's the difference between a picture and a portrait? And then P for parachute. And then P for this. And I go, OK, well, maybe she's a portrait because she's in black and white. And maybe this is just a picture. So some of it is really okay. hard to determine. And you got P for Pepsi. P for Pepsi <laughs> and P for pumpkin. And happy, happy Halloween. That's actually quite timely. OK, well, I don't want us to run out of time. I see on the on the uh, table here some some books. What are, what are, what is what is this? Um, well, this is the beautiful catalog that was put together uh, for the entire biennial Prospect Three Notes for Now. Oh, I see. Um, so this encompasses all of the artists that are in the exhibition. And are there was some uh, pictures of some of your work as well in there? There is. Okay. Now, what is the and other? And this book? is um, a catalog. Actually, this is actually a milestone for me. My first. Uh, catalog that, that was produced for a body of work um, from earlier this year. I had a solo exhibition at Ronchini Gallery in London. And, in London? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so some of the paintings that are in this book are being exhibited um, at May Gallery. Uh -huh. um, and so the the book is quite lovely. Um, let's see. And actually, this is one of the paintings that uh, will be on display. Uh, at May Gallery now. All right. How many how many items do you have at the May Gallery? <laughs> well, there's there's a sound installation, which is kind of the first part of the exhibition that you kind of participate in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then you walk into a space which has the feature length film, which is an hour and twenty minutes long, um, and that's kind of like the culminating uh, part of the exhibition. And then there's uh, three more screens which are showing. Uh, process footage, so footage of uh, behind the scenes, uh, footage that kind of sets the scene um, and retakes, things like that. And then there's uh, several flat works um, also. So there's probably about 15 or 20 pieces altogether. Well, now let me ask this because it, uh, I'm really not sure. The artwork that that is here in, in Prospect 3, is it for sale? I mean, can people come mm -hmm. to your gallery and buy one of Tamika's works of art? Not, not all the venues. Um, part, of the re part of what funds may is sales of artworks. Um, so even though we're a nonprofit, we're able to sell artwork. Well, you so have to pay the rent. That's right. <laughs> okay, so some of it was, so. what she has there in the exhibition mm -hmm. yep. can be purchased but not delivered until the, ex After, until the uh, that's right. thing is Correct. completed. That's right. Yeah, and there's actually there's more information on our website, which we just launched a brand new website. You want to tell our yeah. people what your website Please. is? Yes. <laughs> Uh, it's may dash norleans.org. That's M A Y. Yep, that's correct. Dash like the month. Yep. New Orleans. New Orleans. Dot org. Dot org. Yep. And, and, and you have information about this show. Yeah, we have information about the show. Um, we also have a bookshop, which we just opened in the Marini. And um, these two books are available as well as uh, Basquiat and the Bayou. And uh, bookshop is located at 2402 Royal Street. All right. And, is, uh, is that Marini or Bywater? Marini, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I see something on the table that I'm not sure I want to talk about. It says, <laughs> how to see... <laughs> Mika Jean, how she got good. Yeah. How to see got good. Mika Jean, how, Mika Jean, how she got Mika good. Mika Jean is you. That's me. Well, what, what, what is that? Is that a poster or what is that? It is a poster uh, and it's also sort of this fold out which lets you know about the exhibition, where it is, um, et cetera, and a lot of the information that Keen just provided. So Mika Jean, How She Got Good is basically the name of the exhibition and the title of the installation and feature length film. How She Got Good. Mm -hmm. How did she get good? <laughs> that is very complicated. You're asking a very complicated question. But to summarize, I would say, um, as I said, I moved here two years ago specifically for this project, for, for this prospect project. 
Um, and my intention was to investigate, experience, embody what it means to be back. What does it mean to engage with family that I've not seen in 15 years? What does it mean to interact within a community the last time that I was here, I was in a very different uh, situation. But that's an experience a lot of people returning after Katrina would have gone through. Absolutely, absolutely. So that was why it was so important for me to embody that experience myself and somehow present it in a way that um, it felt maybe like there was a universal or a familiar um, experience when people uh, see the film itself. And so I think for me, the getting good, uh, as, as the, the, the installation itself is up and I'm even examining it and thinking about what it all means, I believe more so um, that the process of doing this, the, the last two years of my life uh, and moving back here is really how I got good. So in the last two years, I finished grad school um, I've moved back home. I have learned so much um, as an artist about um, how to conduct business. How do I want to be treated when I walk into a room? How do I want to be presented um, as a woman, as an artist, as a human, as a person of color uh, living here? Um, so I think in all, getting good has a lot to do with you know, and, and putting on such a large production like this can be very stressful. You can you lose sleep. It's very emotional. It's very nerve wracking. Um, maybe not for everyone, but at least for me and, and my experience. Um, and I think getting good means that I can sit here before you right now with a sound mind, yes. with a smile on my face, feeling healthy and good and in a good place. Um, Are you saying that at some earlier time you would not have been able to do that? That is true. Well, I'm glad that you're that you have reached this point. Thank now, you. let me ask you: Are you present at the May Gallery during these hours of exhibition? Well, since I literally live in a, by car, like 90 seconds away uh -huh. from the May Gallery, so I am often in and out uh, of the gallery. I ask because uh, visitors who come to the gallery might say, well, what did she mean by this? Or, you know, <laughs> and I was just wondering whether you are sometimes there to meet with, with the people who, who come in. Well, we, we spend a lot of time talking about the show and we, we put the show together in the space together. Um, but Tamika spent a lot of time on producing the video. And um, I've watched the video several times. And so right. Now you've, you've told me something I didn't know. What is this video? Um, I think Tamika could probably explain the video better. But, but this uh, is something you're showing at your gallery, the yeah. video? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I mean, since she's sitting here, I might as well let her have the opportunity to <laughs> explain it. So, so the exhibition itself, when you walk into the space, you are bombarded with, in total, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 different channels of video. There's a grid of nine, there's a grid of three to four, there's a large scale landscape channel and then there's the narrative channel which is sort of uh, in a in, in its own space so uh, so there's this there's a feature length film which is basically Mika Jean who is navigating the space of, of, of New Orleans not only New Orleans is the, the exhibition I'm sorry the film starts with the artist in London producing this work and putting up a show then it goes right to Los Angeles no. Then it goes right to New York. Then it goes to New Orleans. So you kind of see this artist in fragments. So similarly to the, to the way uh, these paintings are collaged and my other works are collaged together, you're basically watching a film, which is a sort of a collage of, of experiences that are fragmented. And um, I think it's evident of not just an artist's life, but any person's life, how we are a bunch of places and then even though we're physically right here, our minds might be somewhere else. And while you're sitting and watching the narrative, you're hearing the sounds of other things going on in other spaces. So you're present, but you're also ahead of yourself and behind yourself at the same time. It's a, it's Are you here now? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> that well, is a good question. As we're, yes. uh, as we're taping, this show, uh, Prospect, has been going for a few days, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you getting some? Are you getting some good attendance at your gallery? Yeah, abso absolutely. Yeah, 
Yeah, during the opening week, um, the VIP opening days were last Thursday and Friday. We had probably about 250 people come through. And then uh, the opening reception, I'd say we had about 300 people come through. It was packed. That's yeah. all? Well, it seems like. It, it may have been more, I think it was so much more. Yeah, it was well, really. Those are very yeah. large numbers, yeah. having I mean, been in the gallery business. Yeah. I, you know, I can appreciate that kind of traffic. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and the people were there because they are interested in contemporary art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, all right, we, uh, we still have a few minutes to go, Tamika, so okay. just tell us whatever you want to about some of the other items or on exhibit. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I would really just encourage uh, anyone who's interested in prospect and contemporary art and film to go to May Gallery yeah. to uh, sit and watch uh, the film. I think it's a great opportunity to um, uh, see some of the landscape of New Orleans and uh, it, it, it's, it's a very public display of the city and also very private. You share moments with me and family members that are quite intimate and private and, um, and then you also see the very opposite. You get to see Mika Jean in her sort of, in all of her glory, you know, internationally doing things and performing, but there's also lots of vulnerability involved. I, I actually read a review recently where um, they said, you know, you watch the artist, you know, uh, walking around New Orleans and she eats crawfish and, you know, she cries and she, you know, dances to bounce in her studio and she does all these things and it's kind of hard to look away. And I thought that that was actually quite nice. Um, and, uh, I just say one thing. Sure. I don't want to cut you off, sure. but I just want to let people know that we're open Wednesday through Sunday, uh -huh. 11 to 4 p.m. Okay. And we're also open by appointment. So if people mm. want to make an appointment, they're welcome to contact and, me. And they make an appointment through your website. Which yeah, they can email me. Um, we can okay. set an appointment with Tamika. And, uh, yeah. We have just a couple minutes left, but are you a split personality? There's Tamika <laughs> and there's Mika Jean. <laughs> Are these two different personalities? I would beg that I exist in a multi-consciousness. <laughs> so I'm an artist, I'm a daughter, I'm a granddaughter, I'm a professor, I'm a singer, I'm a performer, I'm a painter, I'm a friend, I'm a lover at times. You're gonna use up the final two minutes telling us all the things that you are, but <laughs> you still have a minute if, to, Tell our audience whatever they, you'd like them to know about, about you or your or your exhibition. Um, yeah, I mean, I just really hope that that people take the time to just go go see the exhibit. I think that they will be quite overwhelmed uh, sonically, visually, um, not just with my work itself, but where May Gallery is located, the beautiful train tracks. Um, it's a very peculiar location. I think they'd enjoy it a lot. Well, talking about location, Maroney is the new French Quarter as, as well. <laughs> Folks, thank you for being with us. Come back again.